he would record a lot of prominent people and keep these recordings in a safe. She goes to his house, gets the stuff from the safe, and at that point, she says, if anything happens to her, the book will be released along with the tapes. What I got for you today, my friend, you're getting a treat here. You're getting a scoop that nobody has gotten. I mentioned this on one reel and it was my most played reel on my entire Instagram over a hundred and something thousand plays, which for me is pretty big. Uh, like that's a lot more than normal. I I'll kind of precurse this. So I I'm not going to give the names of how I come into contact with this book, but anybody that knows anything about the Diddy situation. He had a longtime girlfriend, Kim Porter. Now he had a few kids with her. They had a long running relationship and then they did separate. Now it's been long rumored that she was writing like a diary. I don't necessarily know if I would call it a book, but a diary of events that took place throughout their relationship. And then she mysteriously passed away due to pneumonia. As I was saying, it, it's been long rumored that she was writing a tell all book or at least a memoir detailing her tumultuous uh, life with P Diddy and some of his extracurricular activities. I read it. I was actually out of town. So I took it with me and I'm reading it on the plane and it's not a lot, which, which tends to, put a little bit of validity towards it was like her memoirs. It wasn't actually a full blown book. This is not a, you know, 300 page book by any right. means. It more or less looked like a diary that was kind of put together in, you know, sequential order. And it was about 45 pages long and I read it and I'm just like, wow. And now I grew up, P Diddy was hot when I grew up, like bad boy was hot, you know, Tupac. I mean, every, every, those two were the, the top in the game, you know, Christopher Wallace, Biggie Smalls, Tupac. So Puff Daddy was in the limelight everywhere, you know, and he, you know, stayed there for a good deal of time. And then he branched out and done other things with Ciroc and Sean John. So it's not somebody that I was completely, you know, unaware of, but the things that were talked about in that book, I was just like, there's no way, there's no way he done all this. And we're going to talk about a few things in there because now like the more time has went by, I read this book in April. Yeah, it's the, just... the 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 um hold on, let's see. The Southern District of New York would beg to differ. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That a lot more that book that that diary that you read is looking more and more credible now. Yes, it definitely is more and more credible. And this is just one woman's accounts as as we'll go through when we get into the you know, all the, the charges against him. There's multiple women, multiple crimes, multiple things that's going on that he's getting charged with very serious stuff. Uh, and this is just one account, one lady. Now she, and I'm going to just talk about a few of the things from this book. Cause there's a lot of stuff in there. Some, some very prominent, uh, people in the music business are named. I'm not going to talk about every single one, but just a few of them. She says when she first meets Diddy that they, of course, you know, began at some point in time to engage in some activity and he, which is fine. I mean, you know, by God, go right ahead. Yeah. He's not shy. That's for sure. No, no. Because what his idea of a good time is, is he wants her to use extra large toys and, and different things on him to the point to where he's, you know, bleeding. Mm. Um, you know, it seems a little painful to me. I don't, I don't know. I, I wouldn't consider that what I would, you know, put in the classification as a pleasurable experience, but to him it was. Um, and I think you can get there. I think at a point in time when you have money and stuff like that, I'm not saying I'll ever be there, but I think it's possible. 
When you have money and you have girls, I think, you know, you probably go to one girl, then two girls, then three girls, then this, then that. I think you eventually have to get to where that really, really, really far out there is what satisfies the regular craving for you. I think that's a thing. Um, you know, my, my opinion, I could be wrong. Uh, it's not my thing, but I think it is a thing for some people. And she said that she was so weirded out by this experience that she didn't want to talk to him anymore. And obviously she knew who he was, it was Diddy, but I mean, she was just like, this is pretty strange. I'm not going, yeah, it's too much. And he pursued her for a while, but they met up at a club and he was like, you know, I was just kind of a little out there and I'm sorry. And I'd really like to give it another chance. And you know, they, they get back together. And she alludes in there that he had affairs with people like Mary J. Blige and that she also was having, it was a pretty much an open relationship. Um, they were both doing their own thing, which is, I think in Hollywood and, and you know, that industry is probably pretty common. Right. Um, one of the bigger ones was, and this is the short that we, you know, that I discussed on the show was the Tupac situation. Now she claims in this book to have been with Tupac solo at another point in time. Now, before all the bad blood between East coast, West coast, and before everybody wanted to, you know, take each other out, all these guys are friends. Now there's some pictures in this book of people hanging out in the same location, you know, Snoop, Diddy, etc. And a lot of these, I mean, there's, there's a famous, um, I forget right off where it's right off where it's at, but I mean, Pac and Biggie are together rapping at like some concert. It's a famous uh, concert where they get up there and freestyle. So there was a point in time where they all got along. And she right. said they're, they're at Diddy's home. And, you know, they're all hanging out, chilling. And she's like, she's been with Pac Solo. And Diddy kind of brings it up like, hey, you know, we've all been with each other, but we've never been with each other together. I've been with Kim. You've been with Kim, but we've never been with Kim together. And almost kind of lays out a competition as to one goes first and sees how long it takes to get Kim to climax. Right. And Pac is, according to her words, and I, I want to make sure people understand this. I'm reading from this book. I'm not saying this is true. I wasn't there. I wasn't hiding in the closet. Oh, Hollywood wasn't nowhere around there. Okay. I'm going off the book. She says that Pac is immediately like, you know, F that, F this, F that, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling that or whatever. And he just like basically cusses Diddy out and leaves. So this sends Diddy into a little bit of a tizzy. He's obviously upset. I don't know whether he's worried that, you know, Pac could spill the beans on what he's into or what. The next day, she says she walks in on a conversation that was had between Pac and a guy by the name of Jimmy Henchman, and that it was an orchestrated setup for Tupac to be shot, which was the shooting that happened at Quad Six Studios the first time Pac got shot a number of times. Now, I know people are going to say it wasn't Jimmy Henchman, it was this person, or it was that person, or it was Haitian Jack, or it was for this reason. I'm not saying this was exactly what happened. Again, I'm just reading from this book. Now, if you watch that Tupac and Biggie, um, I don't know if I actually ever watched the Tupac movie, but I know there was a show and he is going to the studio in New York, allegedly big season from the street. They wave him up as he goes into the lobby. He's basically robbed and shot now in Tupac's mind. He's thinking he was set up to come there. That is really in a sense, what kind of started this whole beef between Tupac and Biggie East coast, West coast, that event was the, the catalyst. That was the first domino to fall. Now, Pac did not, obviously he didn't die. He got shot and he lived, but he, after that, things just wasn't the same. Now to hear this book, tell it that was put into motion by Diddy as a revenge for, I guess, Pac dissing off the situation. It seems a little extreme to go to that. I'll admit. But once it doesn't happen, once he's not killed, he's like, all right, well, now he's going to be pissed. Now he's going to think it's us. That will upset you. Yeah. I mean, I can see where he'd be a little, you know, some people shrug it off, but <laughs> some people take it personal. 
I mean, I would. That's that's, that's personal. It's personal. Um, so now Diddy is kind of like, where do we go from here? And so there's a meeting, and he tells Big, and Big allegedly does not want to do this, but he tells Big to go ahead and drop the track, Who Shot You? This is all, again, this is all in her book. I'm not making this up. This isn't Hollywood's, you know, hip-hop fables. This is from the book, okay? You know, you don't like, you don't want to believe me, you know, go, go yell at the author. That's all I can say that he tells him to go ahead and drop who shot you because it's almost a, a poke at Tupac. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with the song, but it kind of, it's basically, you know, who shot you kind of says it, you know, but yeah, allegedly yeah. this was written before that happened. But now when he drops it immediately, it kind of just pours gasoline on the situation. And she says, puppy's like, well, if he didn't die, he's going to fire back at us. We might as well at least profit financially from this. And so that kind of starts that. He drops that. Tupac drops Hit Him Up, which was probably one of the greatest diss tracks ever. He talks about being with Faith's wife, or Biggie's wife, Faith Hill, or Faith uh, Evans, excuse me. Definitely not Faith Hill. Faith Evans. Um, And so that's where all those kind of tracks come into play. Now, Biggie Smalls is a whole nother story in this because... Biggie allegedly was going to leave bad boy and go out on his own. Now, since I read that book in March, there's been multiple articles to drop here, there on different internet sources that said Biggie was going to go out on his own. There's been sources that said Biggie and Pop were going to both leave. Biggie was going to leave bad boy. Pop was going to leave death row. They were going to get together and do their own label. That has also been something I've read that is not in this book, but that's just other things that I've read. Now, Puff says at a party, this is at a party where a lot of prominent, uh, you know, people are supposed to be at and Kim overhears Puffy say, I'm not going to have his damn back. If he's not got, got my back 100 or something, something to that effect. And he's like, I can't do it myself, but I'll pull protection. If we ever leave New York. Now, if you take that at face value, when they go to California, which is not the place that, you know, your, your East coast rappers are very welcomed. It is where big got shot. Right. And if you look into the details of it, Gene deal, who's been doing a lot of interviews here lately, he was the bodyguard. He was with puff. Nobody was with Biggie. Biggie was taken out. He was shot. I mean, puffs car was not shot at. So you kind of start to see maybe there is some validity to this, but then I would like, okay, well, why would you take out your biggest artist? Well, if he knew that Biggie was going to leave, he wasn't going to be his biggest artist anymore. Right. You know, and I'm not a hundred percent sure on what happened with all the royalties and, you know, the, the masters and all of that stuff. There's a part in that book that says Valletta Wallace who was Biggie's mom came to Puff and was basically asking for some of the money that her son had earned and generated through all the the music and everything. And he basically told her kind of like the whole uh, MC hammer thing was like, he didn't really make any money. He was in debt. You know, I paid for all the publishing for these records. I paid for this. I paid for that. Really? He owed me money, but if you need a little bit of help, I'll give you some. Yeah. Out of and, the goodness of my heart. Yeah, out of the goodness of my heart, I'll give it to you because I'll be honest, you haven't heard a ton from Valletta Wallace, good or bad, about the whole situation with Puffy. And let's be honest, Diddy, you know, I'm sure it was his friend. I'm sure they had, you know, some sort of bond, but he milked, you know, Biggie's death for everything it was worth. And apparently, I'm not sure. I think it is true because they Sting said it on uh, The Breakfast Club. He sampled, uh, the police, I'll be missing you when he sung that song for Biggie. Allegedly, he has to pay Sting, I want to say it's like a thousand or a couple thousand a day for the rights oh, to yeah. that song. That's about to run out here real soon. Sting better be glad he got what he got because Diddy's about to not be able to pay nothing for a while. So that's, a, that's another story that's in this book. Um, there's also a story about, you remember when he dated Jennifer Lopez? Yeah. According to Kim, this whole 
entire relationship between them two was basically a farce for the media. They were together. They would make public appearances. They would appear to be a couple, but in actuality, Kim was still living at his house. And okay. there was an instance, I don't know how much you followed rap back in those days where you, you were out in those days, weren't you? <laughs> were you in jail? <laughs> I was, I was out, but I, okay. I don't. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure the time this would have been maybe mid nineties. There was a rapper that come out named shine. Remember him? No, I would have followed it more if they'd played it on WQIK country. Okay, um, I don't yeah, know if that's a lot. I would have probably heard a lot more of it, but they didn't <laughs> tend to play those songs in country. Uh, music. You're not going to get a shine on on W I K K country. I, I, there's not. I'm glad there's not another K in there. Otherwise, that's going to be some. There could be some sniffing around that radio station. That's, U Y K, not K K. Oh, oh, U -Y -K. Y K. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so Shine come out. I actually love Shine's first rap album. It is up there on like my top five of all rap albums. And I, I love all kinds of music. Shine had a very distinctive voice. He sounded very much like Biggie Smalls. And he was kind of going to be that guy to revive Bad Boy, to put him back in that gangster rap. Because you could tell a lot of his stuff that he was rapping about was stuff he really did. I mean, he told a story. If you go back to how people would tell stories when they were rap, he was telling stories I'm not going to say they were true, but they damn sure sounded true. If they weren't his, they were somebody that he knew. Right. Because it was pretty detailed. So his stardom, his, his, you know, ship starting to sail, if you will. And they're all at a nightclub in New York. Jennifer Lopez, Shine, Puff. And there's a shooting that happens. A girl gets shot in the face. I don't think she died. I think she got shot in the face. I don't think anybody died. I don't think. Um, but anyways, they all get in Puffy's uh, SUV and take off. Now, what it what it winds up happening is Shine takes the rap for having the gun and doing the shooting. But everybody immediately says that it was it was Biggie. Shine gets a pretty substantial prison sentence out of this. I don't know if it was like 10 years or, or 12 years, but he goes to jail. That's what eventually winds up happening. But before that, like the next day after the shooting, she says, this is Kim talking. JLo shows up at the house and is like irate with, with Puffy saying that, you know, she's got a career and this is going to cost her career in movies and this, that, and the other. And he tells her to relax that he's got it all under control. And she said, what do you mean you got it under control? And he's like, shine's going to take the rap for it. He's going to take the bid. Nobody's going to have to do any time. He's going to admit to having the gun. He's going to admit to be, being the trigger guy. And you know, we're, we're basically going to skate on this. And she's like, well, what happens if he changes his mind while he's in there? Like if he don't decide, Hey, I'm not going to do all this time. He's like, nobody inside will change their mind. There's too many people that can get to him if they decide to change their mind. And I guess to a certain degree, maybe it kind of set her at ease. And according to Kim, before she leaves, he tries to get the three of them together to get together. And J-Lo's just like, no, that's, I, there's too much shit going on. I can't do this. So even in the midst of all this, Puffy's still trying to, you know, get J-Lo and Kim in the bed. Um, you know, I guess kudos to him. He's not priorities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do got, you got priorities. You got priorities. What, what shirt do you have on? Uh, this, is, this is my Hawk Tua. 24 spit on that. Oh, that's great. How about that girl? Huh? I don't want to yeah. get sidetracked, but Jesus, I'm just so jealous of her. I know. Career. Like, I mean, a random comment. Boom. Stardom. She's probably a multi-national multi, multi millionaire by now. Right. She's, I know the other day I read that she made her first million. She's got her podcast with, uh, what Jake Paul, the better response from it. She's done been on all these Matt Rives had her at his, uh, you know, concerts or, you know, comedy shows. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's everywhere and good for her. I'm not knocking. A lot of people yeah. hate on her. I'm not, knocking. I would, I would have grabbed that 15 minutes and wrote it for all I could too. So yeah. Good for her. But yeah, that's, that's my hot to a shirt. Um, so just a little tidbit here on the shine situation. 
Sean gets out of jail and allegedly he cut, I think his second rap album, there's like two songs on there. The quality is absolutely horrible. Allegedly he, he cut them from jail, but now he gets out of jail and is given, I can't remember the, the number amount on the contract. It was either like 2 million or 8 million, somewhere along in that neighborhood by a guy named LA Reed. LA Reed's a big music producer and in, in Hollywood. You probably heard his name mentioned in other documentaries. Um, now he's given that by LA Reed to do like, you know, X amount of albums. That second one came out, he goes to a whole nother country and that album never comes out. Now, what it said is that was a payoff, a payoff that LA Reed made to shine, to do some albums that he never did. LA never tried to follow up on it, get his money back or everything, because more than likely, you know, what happened. And according to this book, Puffy paid LA under the table to give that to shine. That way it's not coming from him as payment for taking the rap for the right. Song. And they have a legitimate reason on why he would pay him. He's supposed to do two albums and he fucked me over. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, LA never pushes it. You know, he, he never goes after it, but correct. They have a legitimate reason why that money came, but you know, and nothing, nothing ever came of it. They never got what they were supposed to get. Everybody said that was the payoff. Now there's another situation and this was actually picked up by a few media outlets. Uh, radar online, I think had it. Um, Angela Yee, who used to be on the breakfast club. Um, she had it on her show. It surfaced on a bunch of podcasts, probably about a month ago where he had hit her, I think with a chair and she woke up in the hospital and hit. of course he's yeah, hit her, hit Kim. Okay. And she wakes up in the hospital, you know, after being hit with this chair, he was apparently a very violent dude. Like, you know, not only would he beat her physically and especially if he thought she was talking to other guys, but like it got to a point somewhere along in there where he was very, very violent. And, but for whatever reason, she kept going back. So it's one of those things where like, you can only get pity for so long because you keep going back to this guy. But she ultimately in the book, she says that she loved him. Now she he's manipulating her with money and threats oh, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So, or yeah, at least that, that seems to be his MO a, according to the indictment. But anyway, yeah, and, and that's what I mean. You got to figure when you've got that much money, you got to think about this, Matt. We're talking about a guy that a year ago was given the key to the city of New York in the middle of Times Square. They gave Sean Combs, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, whatever you want to call him, the key to the city. And now he's possibly going away for the rest of his life. Yeah, I don't think the key, uh, it doesn't really open anything, but I hear you. No, it doesn't that. open anything, but it's still like, you know, well, they did oh, give Francis yeah. the key to the Florida, I think, one time. The bar is low. Like these criminals, <laughs> you're giving criminals, like I should get a something, passcode, something. The key to a real estate agency down there. Something. It's ridiculous. Um, there's a situation where she winds up being pregnant. Uh oh. Twins. Now, there, there had been. Um, no, no, well, Kim. Kim. No, I. I know Diddy's not <laughs> pregnant. Yes, I'm saying Diddy. by Diddy. Yes, by Diddy. It was kind of an open relationship. It was in the beginning. It kind of solidified back to a regular relationship, but they would often have like other parties come in involved. She would say that he would have multiple people come in and be with her so he could watch. And these are the parts when I'm hearing about this, I'm like, I don't know if this is, you know, 100% accurate. It sounds like it's kind of stretched, but then now with all these, indictments it sounds right in line yeah and you got to remember again i'm reading this back in march or april so she finds out she's pregnant and she goes to him and she tells him and because they've been doing all this wild crazy shit she thinks that he's going to be upset and she said he's like smiling and he's like kind of happy he's like oh my god i'm going to be a you know a dad this is great because she had a kid when they first got together, but it was from another guy named Al B. Sure, who was another singer. So Diddy was excited. And she was like, she said, I was so relieved that he wasn't mad. And she was like, but we're going to have to go, you know, one more time now before you can't do this anymore. And she's like, what do you mean? And what he meant was they're going to have to do another, you know, basically 
I don't know. I don't know if I would classify this as a party, but he wanted multiple people, multiple guys to be with her. And we're talking like Vince McMahon esque type situations, like hurtful stuff, right. stuff that I don't even want to say, cause I don't want to get this video demonetized, right. but I mean, just some really bad shit. And she, you know, was somewhat, I would say forced or, you know, at that point she's got his kids. What can she do now? After she has the kids, the relationship doesn't get any better. There's still a lot of stuff going on. You know, there's, there's a lot more stuff in the book. So I can't remember all of it, but she, the, the key here is when she finally decides to get away. Now she said that he would record a lot of prominent people and keep them, keep these recordings in a safe in his right. house. Now she goes to his house which I'm sure she had access to. Um, she gets the safe, gets the stuff from the safe, all these videos, and she basically uses that as the exit strategy. And at that point, she says that she's going to write this book. And if anything happens to her, the book will be released along with the tapes. Now, these tapes are alleged to have singers, Usher, Justin Bieber, you know, there's a lot of prominent celebrities. Now, these are all guys that have been in the media about being with him. There's videos of him with Bieber saying that Bieber hung out at his house for like two or three days back when Bieber was really young. There's so sometimes there's, unbeknownst to the victims, Combs kept videos. He filmed of victims engaging in acts with commercial workers. And then later it says in the indictment that um that he would use them to intimidate and um you know coerce uh the these various people so yeah bro this is why you should have done a video like this three months ago or two months ago well like i didn't at, at that point i was just like i don't want to come out and be like the the delivery guy of a bunch of misinformation and this that and the other i was very this is, you got to understand, this is a guy that I would have not thought was responsible. I don't think a lot of people thought he was responsible for all this. I interview guys that do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be that guy. I mean, listen, there's a good 15% of these guys that are talking to me on this, on my program. And I'm thinking, I don't think so. Yeah. Doesn't that, I don't think that happened. That doesn't feel right, but Hey, whatever. Anyway, the book that's it's out, right? Yes, the book is out right now. It's on Amazon. Right. Uh, the, and it's the, been out for how long? It actually got, I think, dropped on Amazon about two weeks ago. But it's been around since April. Okay, so it's been around whatever. But it's been published. But it's been published oh, two weeks ago. And the indictment just came out. Yes, it's been out. Uh, it's been published, I think, on Amazon. It got posted to Amazon roughly two weeks ago, and the indictment, yeah, just just dropped today. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, I I, I talked about. I do what? Do you have a copy of it? Not not since it actually got published by Amazon because everything's changed. It was basically just like a it looked like a movie script when I got it. Okay. Now, now it's got like a cover, and it's actually I don't know if you can see this, but uh. Oh, Kim, that's not a bad cover. It's not horrible. It's Kim's Lost Words. Looks a little blurry on the phone, obviously. But the book didn't even have a cover when I read it, which is another reason why I was a little skeptical about all this, but that it did have some pictures mixed in there with it. And again, like I said, this is this just come out a couple of weeks ago. The indictment just happened, but I read all this, you know, months and months ago. And then little bit by little bit, all these things were coming out. There's clips of him if you search Diddy and Bieber where he's talking about he had uh, Bieber at his house and they were partying and hanging out together. And then okay. if you watch, there's a clip with Usher where he's with Howard Stern and he's talking about the, the Diddy parties. I think they, they called it something, but it was the Diddy parties um, that he would go to. And he's basically saying that a lot of shit went on that shouldn't have went on. And Howard even asked, he's like, if you had a son, would you let him go to a Diddy party? And he's like, absolutely not. So she gets her hands on these tapes and that's basically like her security, you know, that, all right, if you, something happens to me, this is going to go right now. They do separate. She gets sick and ultimately passes away in pneumonia. He's not questioned or anything in this 
you know, they ruled it pneumonia. So I don't want to, you know, drum up a conspiracy with that, but they didn't question him in anything like that. It wasn't ever really looked into. Did he do this? Even though there's been quite a few people in the music industry involved with Diddy, this died of pneumonia. I mean, not saying that's a coincidence, but I'm saying that's, a, that's it, it, it looks like a coincidence. So she's, she's got this, she passes away in pneumonia. Now her house is robbed. Right. And basically what they're saying that what happened here is, or the consensus is that Diddy knew she had this. So he went and tried to retrieve all these hard drives. And the word is that he did. Now, obviously this isn't what's in the book. This is what I was told by this individual of how he became in possession of it was, did he got the hard drive? Did he got all the evidence back from her? Yep. Okay. Okay. Right. Now at some point, and this is, again, this is alleged, this is coming second, third hand information. Cassie got it from him and Cassie gave it to someone who he knew. And that's how he come in contact with it. Cassie is the girl, obviously, that was shown in the video of him really, really brutalizing in the in the hallway and next to the elevator. That's the uh, the video that released probably two or three months ago. I don't know if you remember that one or not. It was, it was pretty graphic what he did. Okay, you know, right. chasing her down the hall, beating her, kicking her, and all that. Allegedly, she got it from him, and whoever she gave it to knew the person that I was speaking with, and that's how they actually got it. Um, they're obviously worried about repercussions from releasing this, but they wanted the truth to come out. And so that's kind of where we, where we are now. You notice the name on that book of the author. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not the author. She's the, it, it's yeah. Well, yeah. By, uh, uh, Millwood or whatever, uh, Jamal Millwood, T Millwood for Billy Porter. Right. Now you want to know what you get when you Google Jamal Millwood. Mm -mm. This just right. kind of goes further down this rabbit hole. This was an alias of what uh, allegedly Tupac Shakur used after he faked his death. Oh, okay. So I don't know whether this is just like a little inside thing or, or what with this. Um, but yeah, th there's a lot more stories in here, man. There's stuff with Jay Z. Um, and I think I might have skipped over that part that allegedly Jay Z was the one that told. Biggie or told Puff that Biggie was planning on leaving, which is what kind of set that in motion that he was going to pull protection. And he wasn't going to back someone that wasn't backing him. The, the kind of the story behind that is if Jay Z wanted that, that spot of New York for him and if Biggie was around, he was going to be second. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, that's, that's in the book written by Kim that that meeting happened. All this stuff up until obviously when she died is accounts that she had, with him there's like i said there's a lot of other stuff in there um we'll put the link up obviously in the description if you guys want to go check it out i'm telling you just to read this it was really at that time like i said it kind of take took me a little bit by surprise but now with all these indictments and we can get into these indictments it seems like this book was spot on because we're not just talking about a few minor instances here he's got racketeering charges which carries a life sentence. A lot of the mob guys that I've interviewed had racketeering charges. He's got kidnapping charges that are a minimum of like 10 and these trafficking charges can go up to life at the minimum of 15. And that's just a few. Yeah. And, and have you seen, I, from what I've seen, they have not given him bond. I don't think. No, I, I can't imagine that. That Well, I, I was going to say, I, I can't imagine they will, but the truth is, they might give it to him. He puts up enough property. He's, he's well known enough. It's kind of like the whole Sam Bankman freed mm -hmm. thing. It's like, okay, you can say, well, he shouldn't get bond. He could flee the country. Well, where's he going to go? You know, there's very few places this guy can go His, you know, he's, he's got enough property and, and stuff to put up as collateral and he's too recognized, too recognizable to disappear. No, I agree. And I guess I never had this, Obviously, I never had this kind of a, you know, situation to deal with, but it looks like kind of a proposal of his defense team, defense team. And it's like a $50 million bond. He's going to put up his home in Miami. It's equated to 50 mil or 49 million. Um, obviously, he can put up other assets of his businesses. Part of the deal was he would be, uh, I guess, confined to his home in Florida. 
and his home in New York and New Jersey. Put an ankle um, monitor on. Put an ankle monitor on. He suspended his um, passport. So obviously he can't leave the country. And also his family, his kids and his family surrendered their passports as well. Um, but last I seen, I don't know if 100% if I can say it's denied, but he hasn't. He hasn't gotten it yet. Um, and I don't really imagine with these charges that he's going to get it because that's not it. It's not just those three. And you got the indictment there, but you know, they got on there coercing, uh, enticing to engage in narcotics, arson, bribery, um, you know, obstruction of justice. Like they got a lot of stuff on him. Yeah, he's carrying weapon. He's known to carry weapons. His his staff we carries talked weapons. about that. The New York, the New York incident, what we talked about. Yeah, they'll threaten you with the weapons. They're threatening you with your career, with violence, with what with, you know everything across the board. So it, it reads very much like a, uh, an organized crime, like a, a continuing criminal enterprise that he's involved in. And he's got a whole group of people that are protecting him and that are basically on staff to clean up after him, to make sure that it doesn't get out in the public to intimidate people. And of course you're, you're moving people for, you're flying people in from various States for, you know, for acts like that's, that's not, that's, you know, trafficking it's it's yeah. all kinds of stuff you know whether that whether these are and they're willing to do it or not it's illegal to fly them in so it's it's all federal jurisdiction he's he's got some problems the real problem is they don't have to chart they don't have to prove a whole bunch of this it's not like that to prove every single element yeah so and, and god knows how many people are ready to get on the stand and start talking especially once he's in custody once he's in custody he's been indicted more people will jump out because a lot of people are like, I don't want to, I don't want to come in and talk because my fear is I'll talk. It'll become known that I talk and you'll never indict this guy. And it'll be out there that I fucking was, I was cooperating and that's, that's bad for me. Yeah. But once you grab the guy and throw him in jail and start arresting people and they realize, oh, this is serious. Okay. I'll talk to you. And, and that's why you see, when you see cases like you know, Epstein or Weinstein or whatever, once that first domino falls, all the other ones start to come behind it. And, you know, people will say, well, why didn't you say umpteen? It could be a lot of reasons why these girls didn't talk in Weinstein's case. If these girls talk, you know, they were, you know, basically threatened with abolishment of the industry. They're, that's how they make their living, you know? So you can say, oh, well, I wouldn't do that. You don't know what you would do if that's how you make a living and it's say, Hey, you do this or you're never working this town again, you know? Oh, who knows? And apparently a lot of people had to endure that. And that's why Bill Cosby, more people started coming out, more people started coming out. And I think, like you said, it gives a, a sense of security when they're behind bars. And then it really starts to, the dominoes really starts to fall. And it sounds a lot to me, Matt, like he's running this like a mob style family. Like he's running off threats intimidation he's got the money to buy whoever you know he needs probably definitely local cops you know own up to detectives probably he could probably put on the payroll if he wanted to um let's not sit here and act like new york is the most clean you know city with a, a, a great criminal record that nobody's ever took a bribe or you know a conspiracy in that town um and i think that's really what it is is he's running this thing like a mob family and there's uh connections that his dad I think was tied into Frank Lucas, who was a heavy drug dealer. He was portrayed in the movie American Gangster when Denzel Washington played him. And I think there's an interview where he talks about Frank is talking to Puffy and he's saying that he knew his dad. So, you know, Puffy's dad was kind of in this life to a certain degree too, the, the gangster life. So it's like he made his money in music, but he still wanted to be a gangster. But yet he had this really undying fetish for basically hours and hours and hours and hours of, of activity. And the, the guy's got to be up there. Well, if the chick was 47, when she died, this is the chick you're banging and she died. It's got to be 50 something. I would imagine, you know, the narcotics trafficking, we're going to read some of the, the narcotics here and you may have them on your list, but you know, this was, you know, blow oxycodone, Xanax, GHB, which is also the date rate drug. And this is the kicker here. I, I didn't, I don't think this come out back when they raided his house. Cause this is when this was found over 1000 bottles 
of baby oil and lube, three AK 47s with drum magazines. I hope that wasn't all in the same room. Otherwise I got some, I got some serious questions. What are you doing with 1000 bottles of baby oil? I mean, I, uh, you know, a lot of slipping and sliding, you know, I mean, you, take, a, you take five or six bottles and you, you, you pay, you, um, duct tape a couple of uh, shower curtains together. You lay them out on the floor and it's just like a big slip and slide. Like it's, well, it's, just, it's all over the place. I heard a guy tell me a, a long time ago, this is actually when you could still find these things. Do you remember water beds? Yeah, of course. He, he said that that was the funnest experience he'd ever had was he had this chick and they ripped off all the sheets. It was just that little plastic thing that held the water and they just doused it with baby oil and, and everything. And just, just, just had a good time. Never had a good time on a waterbed. The rhythm of the water throws me off. Yeah. You know? And you do that. I feel like you're slipping and sliding. You're sh- somebody's, you know, somebody's shooting off the bed and, you know, flying, hitting the wall. And I just feel like, I just know it'd be a catastrophe for me. You know, I, I, it's like, I, I, maybe that's the idea. It's like having sex in the shower. It sounds good. Yeah, it's not. It sounds, all that. It's not. Yeah, you got to get foot placement down. You don't want to fall. No. Threesomes, bumpy, awkward. Somebody's a left out. Is this yours? I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds really cool and they make it look cool in the movies, but no. Nah. Maybe there's a class or something. I'm probably doing it wrong. But anyway, yeah. I'm sure there's a class. You could probably listen to it on Crime and Entertainment. I'm sure there's some good Did stories he? on there. Did he take a class? Oh, yeah. He took, I think he taught him. He can teach class. He'll be teaching ACE courses on this in prison. Yeah. <laughs> they they call these parties the freak off parties. Did you and hear? I, did you hear the, um, sorry. Did you hear the press conference when the U.S. attorney had to say freak off? over and over again like it's so hard for him to be a, he's trying to make it sound really they called these parties freak off you know he's it's like <laughs> i wouldn't have even touched on that if i was you i would have left that part out there's some things i just wouldn't have just wouldn't have broached some show tricks i'd be like look i can't pull this off i can't do it <laughs> and and that's where i guess you would say he's flying in male performers to be with the regular girls like, I don't even think it's enough for him to be involved. He wants to see it and then him be involved. And then they said, after all this is over, that they would get IVs, you know, to, because they had engaged in this for so long, I guess the, the GHB was used to keep them in sort of a comatose state that they were okay with it. They would have to go get IVs to give them energy back. Well, these, okay. So these, these are like male we're talking about, right? I'm assuming it said male performers. So like, I mean, uh, that's what I'm how guessing. Do get, how do you get that gig? Yeah. I mean, that's you're going to get off daddy's going to pay to fly me down and just run through a bunch of girls all night long. You know, I don't, I don't, I mean, listen, when I was in the halfway house and I was, you know, I was on one of those, uh, <laughs> I was on one of those websites looking to apply for jobs. Right. Nothing, nothing. Yeah. I'm so pissed at Darlington High, my alma mater. That was not on the field day list or the uh, career day list. You know, I didn't, I didn't see Puff Daddy's uh, mail on there, or I would have, you know, say he was popular back then. Commercial now, performers. What does that even mean? Like that I is the most- male stars is the only thing I can think of. What you're thinking? Okay, okay. It's got to be, or either just. I mean, I'm sure they have like, I don't know what you call them nowadays, male escorts or whatever but like, i don't want to see all that no i don't want to see all that i don't either i so guess i don't want to follow that i don't want to follow that listen i've seen some i'm gonna be honest with you i've seen some of these things <laughs> i don't want to follow that up like i see something like that I'd be like yeah i don't want to know i don't i don't want to and now what now now kim's coming now kim come on let's go to bed it's 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 9 45 i want to go to bed what are you gonna like, do with that I just had a yeah. gas pump inside of her. <laughs> Can't follow that up. Woo. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, right here before this indictment come down, I'd say about a month, a couple of weeks, he got a hundred million dollar lawsuit on him. Like a lawsuit. I remember that. I, I actually uh, was reading about that right before we hopped on air. I remember seeing it come out 
And it's like these dominoes were were already starting to fall. I don't know how this dude wasn't panicked because apparently he was just chilling in Central Park before all this stuff coming down. He knew it was coming down. I mean, he's probably just like, look, it's this is coming down. He's been holding this thing together for the longest. He's stressed out of his mind. He's probably on, got on all kinds of, you know, he's you know, on all kinds of Xanax and whatever. And, and he's just waiting for this whole, for the whole, for the ship to go down. He's been preparing. He knows he can't go anywhere. He knows I can't run. I can't do anything. Like there's nowhere I'm going to go to get away from this, you know, and he's hoping he's, he's duct taped it together enough that maybe they won't get an indictment or maybe I'll beat the charges or cause let's face it. He, he had people standing by. He had a, a, a crew yeah. of lawyers standing by waiting for this to come down. Yeah, he had to know. I think everybody knew it was coming. It was just a matter of time. And that's what makes me think that they're really, really going to try to nail him to the wall on this because this was, you know, this was really back in March when all this happened or somewhere around there. They built this case this entire time. And he had to know what they found in a lot of these things. And especially if he found, you know, video footage of these parties. And I think that's why they said that so many people were scared to go up against Diddy is because he might've had dirt on him. So who's going to speak out against them? Mm -hmm. It's like, when you go to this, you know, you basically sell your soul. There is a video that's leaked online. Um, this is, is nowhere mentioned in the book. Cause obviously I think by the time he got on the scene, Kim had passed away, but there's another rapper named Meek Mill. And Mm -hmm. allegedly there's a, some activity going on, some Shannon sharpness going on in this and you can it definitely sounds like puffy it definitely sounds like him in there um meek that's kind of up for debate but there's it's uh it's it's they've got something going there in that video it's it's rather short but it's it sounds pretty close did did you see what happened with shannon sharp last week no what you know shannon sharp is no i don't know these people what so Shannon Sharp was a, f- a former NFL player, and he's got his uh, own podcast called Club Shay Shay. That's the one where Cat Williams kind of let out a, a lot of stuff about all the big celebrities. And Oh, and, yeah. Okay. So that, that's Shannon about. Sharp. So he's with a lady friend, and he, he said he's never been on Instagram Live before in his life. So he goes with his lady friend back in this room somehow or another, inadvertently, accidentally, his phone goes on Instagram Live. And he proceeds to, uh, as he called it, starts clapping cheeks. And this is going live. Like you can hear everything. You can't see it because it's like it's showing the ceiling or maybe laying on some covers or something like that. But you can hear a a good play by play, you know, going on. And he's like, you know, we finished. His explanation of it was hilarious. And he's like, we finished. And He's like, I got another phone that only a couple people know. And he's like, the phone is going crazy. People's calling me on FaceTime. He's like, some people ain't never called me on FaceTime. And they said, oh, um, you got to cut your phone off. Man, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, and his, his agent, longest time agent or, or manager, called me like, man, you, you're on Instagram live on your phone. You need to cut it off. He said, what you mean I'm on Instagram live? He said, your phone's on Instagram live. He said, well, what, what, what are you hearing? He said, well, it sounds like it happens. And he's like, Mm. And so the manager put up something like, you know, this account was hacked. Don't know what happened. We're looking into it. He comes out the next day and is like, look, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. It was me. And he's like, look, I told you I get it in. <laughs> I mean, he's trying to, he's trying to play it off, but I mean, it, it's, it's odd to find you that Lincoln sent it to you. It's funny, but I mean, he, he got roasted for it. But again, that's, that's consensual. That's two people doing something of their own free will. Nobody was being beaten with a chair. He, Shannon didn't have four offensive linemen ready to go in after him and, you know, tear this girl apart. What Diddy is doing here is, uh, is way, way, way past, I think, consensual to anything that anybody had going on. And now you're seeing more and more women come up and speak out. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. And when people start, you know, getting a hold of this book and, seeing everything that Kim went through, if he can do that to the kids of his, you know, the mother of his kids and there's nobody that's safe. There's no, there's nobody that's safe. Maybe now, but yeah. well, I don't know. <laughs> um, 
don't know what kind of freak Nick you can pull off in uh whatever that jail is. He is that, he's in Brooklyn. Where's he at? I, I mean, I don't know. He's got to be what he's in. I don't know, New York or something. Yeah. Um, Get Gene Barillo on the phone and tell me where he's at. Um, <laughs> well, MC Brooklyn. I keep hearing, heard him talk about it. So here's the thing. Do, does he end up going to trial or does he take a plea? You know what the problem with someone like this guy is? In his mind, he thinks if I pay my lawyers enough, I can beat this at trial. And you just can't beat the feds at trial if you're guilty. And it yep. sounds like he's extremely guilty. So the problem is, is that the lawyers are thinking we can fucking make a fortune taking this to trial and we'll lose. Maybe we win. Maybe by some miracle, we end up getting a mistrial or we win, but we will fucking make bank if we take this to trial. Then they're going to do a podcast and then they're going to write a book and then <laughs> do everything that the OJ lawyers did. After well, that. what's well happen is they'll, they'll just gut him for as much money as they possibly can. Oh, they'll yeah. cut the hell out of him. They'll drag the trial out. They'll make whatever $50 million or however much he blows on, on his trial. He gets found guilty and then he'll get 30 years, maybe longer. Now, if he, or, now they'll probably offer him some kind of a plea, like, "Hey, take twenty years, you know, take twenty years," and and and. It, but in his mind, he's thinking, "Nah, it's better to just go to trial. I can beat it at trial." But the truth is, you can't beat it at trial. And your lawyers will probably his lawyers, if they're good lawyers, they'll tell him take twenty. If they're bad lawyers, or just basically that's if they're just lawyers, they're going to convince him to go to trial because they know how much money they're going to make at trial. Yeah. So if he's smart, he's got decent lawyers, they'll tell him, take the 20 and we'll try and get you some kind of a reduced sentence or we'll try and get some kind of mitigating factor. They'll try and convince him they can try and get him less than 20, but he needs to take 20 and won't be that bad. And with the uh, with credits and with good time and halfway house and it won't be that horrible and it will be. But um, well, for, especially for him, he's going to fall. He's he has fallen so far right now. He's being treated in prison in a way that he's never been treated in his life. Oh yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. He's never had a door shut where there's nothing. There's no cable. There's no, there's it, the, the mattress sucks. It's noisy. People are screaming. You can't cold. get, you can't get up and get a snack. It's cold as fuck all that you, they put you in a, in a jumper that's been worn by, 800 other people i mean it's just it's disgusting you know it's it's gonna be bad he's he's right now he is in the he's in the depths of of a depression that he's never known and he's coming off of all the drugs that he typically has in his system <laughs> to cope with anxiety and everything else that he's going through he's gonna have a bad time the next few days are gonna be rough what happens is if it's probably better for him if they keep him there they keep him there. Then by the time he's like trying to talking about pleas and going to trial and going back and forth with the U S attorney, if he's been there for a few months, his expectations of life have dropped dramatically. And he probably, he might start thinking, you know what? Okay. So I take 20, I'll end up doing 10 or 12. I can probably do that. It'll suck, but I can do that. I'll still have a bunch of money when I get out. And I won't be, he won't be living like a normal inmate. I'll go to a low security prison. Uh, in a few years, they'll send me to, to a camp. I'll be able to get a cell phone, play video games. You know, I'll, I'll arrange it so that chicks can come in and I can bang them. You know, like it, it won't be that horrible of a situation in a few years because he can go to a camp. It still sucks, but it's not, not, it's not like Shawshank Redemption. And Sorry, go ahead. Go I ahead. I say you, you you almost made that sound a little appealing to some people the way you just run on that. <laughs> he'll I get mean, good food. He'll have women come in. He's got a cell phone. Play video games. Yeah, you can you can basically stay drunk most of the time. You can you know you can you can work out. You can do what basically you get a regular job. And like I said, right now that seems like hell. But his expectations of life, what he expects out of life, is pretty high right now. As it drops to the point where. You know, reading a good book and drinking a, a a beer and texting somebody on the phone is like 
an ama- amazing and super entertaining and be able to watch YouTube. Like by the time he gets into a camp and he can get a cell phone, get an iPhone and watch YouTube, watch movies, play video games. Like it's really just like a really shitty um, summer camp mm-hmm. with shitty guards. But let's face it, he can also put money on everybody's books. He'll yeah. be able to, there will be guards that he'll take care of. Oh, uh, 100%. Yeah, like it's not like 12 years doing 10 or 12 years and almost most of it in a camp is honestly not really bad. With well, money. Are you able to? That's what I was going to say. That's kind of what I was going to get to. Are you able, are you saying it's not that bad because he has the money? Yes. If yeah. you didn't have the money, it would be much worse. Well, it, it would be worse, but it's still not that bad because then what happens is you have the guys that basically just cater to the guys with the money. So do you think he would get even with these trafficking? And, you know, all these other crimes that he's accused of racketeering. I mean, that's some serious crimes that, you know, do you think he could still swing a, a plea deal to get him in that sort of a prison? I think that the, the U.S. attorney would give him. To, well, first of all, the plea deal has nothing to do with the, get, the what kind of prison. It's the time and, and what the charges are. So he'll get 20, but he'll start getting um, uh, the the. Uh, what they call it the the first chance at the the F, fs whatever they call it, these credits that you can get he'll first start getting right. So, or whatever. Yeah. right so well the what the first chance uh yeah first chance yeah right. so first he gets 20 immediately three years come off so he's down to seven 17 years right then he'll start getting he'll start earning credits right away so after let's say three wow. or four three wow. or four years huh why do you start earning credits right away? Because he'll work. You get credits for working. You get credits for taking classes. So after a few years of taking those classes, and by the time he goes to a prison, he'll already probably have a year in. Yeah, He, he won't get sentenced for over a year, let's say. So mm-hmm. you've got a year off. You got to, So you're already at 16 years. For two or th- let's say for three years, he's working and he's taking so he's working and he's taking classes. He gets his time knocked off. He gets credits for that. So very quickly, he'll he'll get down to around 10 years and they'll get him sent to a camp. Okay. It, but even the low is very much, it's sim- similar to a camp. So he'll go to a camp and even in the low, he can get a cell phone. Like he'll have a cell phone. He'll, but in a camp, you could basically, you don't ever have to go to the chow hall. You can have people bringing in your meals. You could have a cell phone. You can... You can play video games. You can watch movies. Like, I mean, that, and that's basically the, from the institution. You know, let's say if you don't have a cell phone, you can still watch. You can buy movies. You can buy music. You, he can listen to his music on the uh, on an MP3 player. He can watch. He can watch movies on. You know, they sell the little iPads where you can watch movies. You can play video games. He'll be able to do all those kinds of things in the camp very quickly. So he's got a shitty four years ahead of him, and then he'll have still have a kind of a shitty. Um, the rest of the time still will be shitty. Let's say he'd probably be able to get out in 12 years. He could probably do 12 years on 20. That's roughly. Mm, and, that's not bad, it's kind of, and, and I think he can get to a camp. I'm sorry. One more thing. The other question was he can get to a camp because although there's charges, it's not, it's not CP. Yeah. It's they're just, they're they're It's trafficking. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he, forced you know like it was it was necessary he's not being charged with like rape right he's not being charged with you know with certain things that will keep you from that and he may even get that stuff dropped let's say he gets that stuff dropped and he just goes with rap. that's what i'm thinking a lot of these charges will probably get dropped they'll stick one and right. that'll be the one that kind of gets him the bulk of his time the thing that i'm curious of and i don't know if he will be like you gotta know that Diddy knows and and probably has names of a lot of people, influential in high places, that are probably not sleeping very well right now, because if he decides to start talking, I don't know what yeah, they may cut him. But but what are, what are these people? So think about it. If you're a U.S. prosecutor, because I hear this a lot, like Sam Bankman Fried, right? So. You take him, they were like, oh, he's paid off. I mean, this guy has literally given millions of dollars to to politicians, directly to politicians. Nobody came out to help him. Nobody's writing him letters. Nobody's in the courtroom. Nobody's making calls in the back room. This guy goes to trial. He fucking loses. So 
what I'm saying is with with Diddy, who does he really know? These are all actors. These are well, right. Actors. That's what I'm saying. I don't think they'll be coming to help him. I'm thinking that they might be worried that he would name them as complicit in what they were doing. Oh, you're saying like cooperate and say, hey, yeah, guess what? Um, what's the guy's name? Uh, what was the guy's name? He was a big time actor, black actor. Um, Will Smith? No, Cubic <laughs> Will Smith. Cuba Cubic Jr. Junior. What's his full full name? Cuba Gooding Jr. He was in Boys in the Hood. Jeremy Cuba, Wire. Cuba Gooding uh, Jr. Yeah. He was great in it. He's actually great in both of those. Um, anyway, uh, um, but let, let's say he knows stuff about this guy, and he's like, "Hey, I know stuff about this. I got this guy on video. I got this." Like those are mitigating factors, and maybe that's even a, a sentence reduction. Maybe it'd be a, it's a five a five K one. So that's possible. But this guy's so so high profile. Maybe he gets twenty years, and then they knock five off in six months from now if he can give up enough people and if he has enough evidence because like even some of the names that were named of people that he had dirt on was like td jakes who's a big right. prominent like preacher you know in the, in the black community um there was a there's a bunch of names man like i said you got did uh bieber um usher like and will smith was named to be at some of these parties these wild parties that would go on his house along with his wife so i mean like you got to think that if there's one guy that knows a lot of the upper echelon of, of Hollywood and, and you know, that scene's dirty secrets, it's definitely him because it sounds like they went to him to fulfill uh, a lot of these things. You know, what I was going to say about the, uh, the sentence reduction, a lot of times a U.S. attorney will take that into consideration and they'll give you more time. Like we're going to give you 30 years, but don't worry, we'll knock 10 years off if you cooperate. But the truth is, if you had no option to cooperate, they were going to give you 20 anyway. Yeah, they were going to give it to you anyway. You know, so it's 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 still really that's where like a good lawyer comes in. And then if they're even interested, you have someone like, you know, let's say El Chapo. Not that this guy's on that level, but you go to El Chapo and he says, I can give you this person, this way. Sometimes you're such so, so high profile. Yeah, they're that's just like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, you, you're, yeah. I don't care who you give us. Yeah, John Gotti couldn't have given them anybody that would have made them not want to say, hey, look, we got our guy. We got John Gotti. Yeah, you're dying in prison. Yeah. I don't care what you do, who you give us, you're dying in prison. Period. Yeah, you know, Madoff. Bernie Madoff. You're dying in prison. Period. That's it. I don't no, 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 but I can give you the head of this hedge fund and this hedge fund and this. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so yeah. So this guy's got some problems. He's got a, he's, I'm curious to know if they'll let him out. If they do let him out, I'd be curious to know if he didn't, you know, what are, what's the term? Unalive himself. Unalive himself. Yeah. Cause I mean, you got to look at when, when everything come out with Epstein and all these prominent celebrities were going to the island and on this manifest, which, you know, for some reason still hasn't really surfaced as the way it should. Um, you know, then he, that allegedly happens to him. So when you're dealing with the upper echelon of society and a lot of these important people that like to uphold somewhat of a, a good upstanding image, that can be rather dangerous. Now I do think Diddy can probably isolate himself a little better than, than Epstein could. I think he's got more guys that are capable of handling such situations, but once you get behind bars, that is a little bit more difficult to obtain. Um, you know, you're, you're very, you're a little bit more limited, not that there aren't bad guys that would protect him in prison, but you're still a little bit more limited behind bars of what you can do, um, as far as protection, if the right people have it out for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I agree. So it, it'll be well, interesting how this plays out because like, I remember I told you about this book a while back, but I was just, I was just reluctant to bring it out. I didn't want to be that guy that brought up a bunch of stuff. Oh, Boy, that never happened. You slipped up, bro. You just, I, yeah, I dropped the ball. Should you should have done this thing months ago or a couple of weeks or even a week or two ago. You know, you, your caution. Now um, I could be sitting here going, I told you six yeah. months ago, all this yeah. was going on. You didn't want to believe me. I told yeah. you it was coming. But I mean, I, I encourage everybody go check out the book. I mean, it, it's Kim's highly lost entertaining. Words. Kim's Kim. lost words. You're gonna Who came up with that title? I, I don't know. You got to ask Jamal Millwood. Kim's lost words wouldn't have been my title, but I mean, you know. no. 
it it's it is it's it's just shy of 60 60 pages i looked it up yeah. um yeah I, I i would repack i would probably i need to talk to jamal because we need to i need to we need to talk about repackaging this thing because the packaging is not great but it would be interesting to read well i mean there's no like there's no blurb on the back jacket cover the 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 photos very very dark well that's what i'm saying i don't think this was intended to necessarily be a full-blown book as the way it's written and the way it reads is definitely more of a diary concept that has kind of been compiled structurally into a timeline if you will um, yeah, so that's yeah. why it's only, you know, X amount of pages, but you know, even the stories that I've told you here, there, there's those in there. There's a few more. Um, I can't remember them all cause it's been quite a few months, but I did know that it did get released the other week. And then when this come out, I called you today and I'm like, bro, we might as well just go ahead and talk about it. Cause still you haven't really heard a lot of people talk about this book other than a few weeks ago when that started, that article started circulating about her getting hit and then waking up in the hospital. That's when it finally started to circulate. What's well, what's interesting is that it, it, it hasn't been published a long, long time ago. Like it's, like you said, it's been floating out there uh, for all this, all this time and nobody's ever taken it and said, Hey, let's put this thing on Amazon. Well, I think what you just said probably could have lent itself to the reason of, you know, he's not, he's kind of walking around, he's free. He sees this book, you know, there's, you know, there's no telling what he might could do or try to figure out who's behind it. So maybe they waited. Maybe they knew the indictments were coming down. You know, maybe it's somebody that, that's tied into the the inner circle. I mean, I think definitely he now is the, he I'm, was raided like he was raided months ago. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I can see where they'd be a little cautious. I mean, this man is alleged to have taking out a lot of people, not just with, you know, you know, it's not just stop with that. Like, I think when they're, when they talk about the arson, it was alleged that he blew up somebody's car. I can't remember that guy's name right off the top of my head, but it was alleged that he blew up somebody's car. This was a rival in the music business that I think owned some, some rights or something or some, some stake of the company that he had. So it's not just, you know, focused on the trafficking and all the weird, you know, kinky stuff that was going on. There's a lot of stuff here that he was running his stuff kind of like a gang you know, or a right. mob family, so to speak. So it's, I can see where if, you, if he's blowing up guys' cars, people might be real reluctant to put out things. And that's largely probably why you've never heard too many people come out and spoke bad because until that house got raided, you never really heard a whole lot, you know, maybe rumble here and there, uh, but not nothing nowhere near like what you're hearing now. How long do you think it takes for him to get a sentence if he gets sentenced? I'm assuming your bet he is a year. Um, a year. Well, yeah. You know, well, now wait a second. Let if he takes a plea. If he takes a plea, I'd say he's a year away from being sentenced. Now, if he gets out on bond, much much longer mm -hmm. because he'll want to drag it out. Right, and, that, and like that's something I think a lot of people just say in case. My lawyer even told me that he's like. If you're good, the longer you drag this thing out, the better. Yeah. And um, if he goes to trial, you know, what, year, two years, about two years before he's sentenced, they got to prepare for trial. They, they're going to need a ton. They're going to have to get their shit together. They're going to have to prepare. You know, Diddy's people are going to keep trying to push it off, push it off. Uh, they've got, a, you know, witnesses to um, – to interview and yeah, it's, it, it, it could be, he probably won't be found guilty in sentence for two years. And then and what you talked about of the unaliving himself, I think is a strong possibility because you look at guys of that stature, they don't fare too well in prison. You know, Floyd Mayweather, the, the boxer, I remember one time he had to do like X amount of days and like they, they wrote this big thing to the warden say that he had to be let out because it was detrimental to his health and his, you know, digestive system and all this other shit. Like some guys just aren't cut out for prison. And I don't think he's one. Yeah. Cause wardens are, uh, wardens are, are so soft hearted. Yeah. You know, well, it worked. He got out. Like he didn't even have to do the full time. And this is cause he you beat a woman. Man. Yeah. Oh, he I didn't, didn't even know that. And as all of his time, if I'm not mistaken, was in like solitary, which that's probably a good thing. Cause that he wouldn't have, you know, he might be a boxer, but the, the, behind them walls is just a whole other story. Um, and, you know, who knows? He might have been treated great. I, I don't know. 
Um, Mike Tyson, from what I understand, had a very good time in prison. Um, yeah, you know, Mike, yeah, um, got, yeah. Tyson's, I'm sure, you know, a legend in there. I wish a legend out here. You know, he's a legend in there and he's and he's also, you know, well behaved and he did well in a very structured environment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he you know, he'll he'll tell you like it was the most calm and serene and peaceful he's ever been in his entire life. You know, some people thrive. Yeah, in nobody try to like dick him out of money or or nothing like that. It was like, yeah, I've heard that. And I can see that like coming from what he came from Floyd. There was a reason why he wanted to do all of it in solitary, though. That was that was there had to be a reason, which he wasn't doing no long stretch either. I think he only had to do like 30 days and he wound up doing like 15 or 17 or something. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, keep in mind, too, D Diddy, by the time he gets there, he'll have he'll have money on 20 guys books like he'll be treated like like a king. But right? like, let's say let's say he's in the county. Yes, he's in the U.S. Marshals holdover from here on out. And then a year from now, he gets sentenced and he gets 20 years and they send him to, you know, some sweet uh, low security prison. By the time he actually gets off the bus, there's going to be 10 guys that already have money on their books waiting for him. He'll have shower slides. He'll have a full locker of, of a commissary. He'll have, he'll have a lock. He'll have whatever he wants, new towels, new this, new that he'll get the best of everything. Cause he'll just drench these guys. You know, he'll saturate that compound in money. And within, you know, within a few days, he'll have a phone. I mean, it'll be, and that's you know, legal to do that. If you got it, that's, that's okay. Is it legal? Like, no, one inmate's not supposed to place money on another inmate's books, but that it happens. all. I've had guys like literally I've had guys put money on my books because you can only spend um, less like three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars in, comm in commissary. Right. So every month I can only spend four hundred dollars, let's say, on commissary. Well, what happens if you buy a lot of commissary? Like you're basically eating out of commissary. You're barely going to the chow hall. You don't like some of the meals. You have people prepare meals for you. You buy commissary and it's going to cost you, let's say it costs you 800 bucks. So what you do is you just say, hey, Matt, can I put 400 bucks? on? Like you barely ever go to commissary. Do you mind? I'll put 400 bucks on your, on your books. You go to commissary and I'll buy you $50 worth of stuff. And, you know, what am I going to say? Yeah, what do I care? I barely ever go to you know, I buy coffee and creamer, you know, at the most, like, that's it. Like, yeah, sure. No problem. You know, so you don't mind doing those things. And, and I'm not, you also have to imagine that if you're, if you're some guy, you're a gang member, there's a, a whole bunch of gang members that are in there and they say, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give your family a thousand dollars and we're going to put 400 bucks on your books to help with your family. But you got to make sure this guy's okay. And by the way, pick four or five guys that you need your there are you gonna need their support to make sure this guy's got support. Absolutely. Put money on my buddy, this guy's book, this guy's book, this guy, you know, all of them. You could put a couple thousand dollars on my books. Yeah. It'll just sit there. I know guys that have over a hundred thousand dollars on their books right now. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, I I know guys that are like they're older guys, they come to prison, they've got a retire, they got multiple sources of retirement funds. And then before they go to their money manager and say, hey, by the way, every month, this one, just put that on my books. What happens is they get to prison and they realize that I can only really spend maybe a hundred bucks on the phone and for core links, which is for your, your, to be able to use a computer. So maybe I can spend 200 bucks on that stuff and 400 bucks at commissary. I can't spend more than $600 a month yeah. on everything I can buy. And you guys, and you're putting 1200 or Two thousand dollars a month on my books. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. Five years later, you're like, "Fuck, man! I got like a hundred thousand dollars on my books." And you know what? The warden will call you in, and they'll be like, "Look, what's going on? <laughs> you got to get this off your books." And I've had, I know guys that have had arguments where they're like, "I got nowhere to put it." Like, I know I'm not doing that. I mean, what are we? You know, sure, let, let me out. Let me run down to the bank. <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. Uh, Jess has a question. My wife has a question. Yes. Okay. There, even though, uh, he has the charges that he has. Okay. He yeah, but for his? no, because see, here's the problem here, or here's the thing. Yeah. He's not being charged with, you know, I don't want to say it again and again. We've yeah. already, said okay. you know, he's not forcing anybody to do anything. He's well, just uh, doing the trafficking right. side of it. Right. Well, well, I understand what the indictment says, the indictment, but the, indi but here's the thing you've got, you've got professional, you know, you got professional people being flown in 
committing acts. You've got so, so these guys are not going to think you're a bad guy. It's like to him, he's going to be like, wait, they're, they're thinking, wait a minute. If this is some hot chick and I'm saying I can help your career, but I want to do some funky stuff to you, you could say no, leave. Like that's the that's what these guys, the way they're thinking. They also know the way the government twists it. And so, they, they, you know, is the, the tapes, these guys would probably actually, you have to think the individuals you're dealing with in there, they're sick. So taping some hot rapper chick doing some funky stuff and some female actress or some male actress, they'll actually think like, dang, bro, like you, you, yeah, man, that's some, sh yeah, boy, you got some shit on it. Like, they're not going to think, they're not going to think this is horrific. This is a horrible thing. These aren't guys that have high morals. And you have to look at it from the aspect oh, too. Is he she's coming in there? Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, she's saying he's not going to be treated like a show. Absolutely not. No, I'm saying right now, absolutely not. And he's going to shower that those guys with with money. They're going to treat him like that. Gold. Was my thing is like when he comes in there, it's like, okay, could you make an example out of him and throw him a beating, or do you take advantage of this guy because you know he's your access to unlimited supply of money for you, your boys, your people on the outside, and you're going to keep him whole in there. So absolutely. Which one is going to give you a greater benefit? Absolutely. Yeah, no, these guys are not resting on their morals. Like they're they're not they're not they're not. These now, if guys you come in there and you're broke, maybe you don't have nothing to offer. Well, if he was broke, then it'd be, then it, they might push him around, talk some shit to him. Now ain't nobody talking and saying nothing. That guy will be running the place. But you're still in prison. Like it sounds good, but you're still in prison. It still it still sucks. Bad boy for life. I don't know what that means, but that's a son. You know, I said you even know any of this man's songs. No, I don't know. None? No. Did you know who Biggie was? Yes, because I painted a bunch of, of paintings of Biggie. Okay, I not, not when you painted them. I'm talking about when the man was alive and singing. No, I had no idea. No. Oh, okay. I did see the movie Colors. And when I saw the movie Colors, they you don't know the movie Colors? I, I know the movie Colors. I'm not sure where this fits into Biggie. Did he have a song? Well, not him, but I'm saying rap. Like, that's the first time I really kind of heard rap. That's what? Robert Duvall and Sean Penn, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then a, then a, a, a bunch of black guys. Um, and, 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 and they were singing rap and stuff. And I remember, you know, no Colors, Colors, you know, that whole thing. So that's I Ice-T, that I think. Who? Ice-T sung Colors, I think. Okay. I yeah, no, I, I know, I know, and I know Ice T because, um, Law and Order. He was in Law and Order, still in Law. And Order. I know Ice Cube because he was the one that, that was the uh, the F the police, right? He was definitely the F the police. Yeah, yeah. I remember that was a big deal. It was a big deal when I was growing up. That was like like that and Ellen DeGeneres kissing another woman on TV. Like, what is? like cats and dogs living together, bro. It was insanity. Like what's happening with the world? Ha! I so wish we could go back to Ellen DeGeneres making out. Like that's like, that's how insane this is. So girls, you're, you're, girls you're, and boys are still boys at least. You're, there. you're a very knowledgeable fella, but Thank I you. think I found where it comes a little short is the rap history. Where... Well, yeah. I mean, I can't, you can't know everything you have to, you know, uh, yeah. you got to pick and choose what you want. It's like, do I know us history? Um, or do I go or, or, you know, rap songs and, and I went with, I went with world war two documentaries. Yeah. You would be better for that with, than I, I'm, I'm going to know the rap. Like, I mean, Tupac was great. Biggie was great. Those were two of the biggest names. And, and arguably like when I was young, that kind of set the tone to where you let you realize that a lot of people take this a lot serious than music. You know, mm -hmm. because at the time that was two of the biggest and probably what I would consider the best rappers ever to both die because of a, if you want to look at it, according to this book, because of Diddy's extracurricular activities that allegedly set all this in motion. So it's, it's, I mean, it's sad. Both of those guys are very young and they probably could have had long careers. Like Tupac, still one of my fouls, still play Tupac songs in his day. I was listening to Garth Brooks the other day. You know, <laughs> friends in low places. And I thought, you know, it's a classic, but I, I know what you're saying. Like, uh, you know, you, you reach back for the classic. <laughs> but nobody's writing anything about Garth Brooks.
And he's still alive. Oh, he's, he's still alive. alive. You, you got to die alive. to get something written about you nowadays. You, know, you got to yeah. you gotta have a tragedy. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of country singers end up, you know, getting getting shot. And they shoot themselves a lot. Sometimes they're cleaning a gun. They'll, they'll lose a toe. All right. Listen, we got to go. I got to go. We got to wrap this up. You got to go. Colby's we got to get out of here. Edit this. Colby's going to edit this and try and get this out like tomorrow. Yes. Diddy. Diddy done. Diddy, Diddy done. done. Diddy done. Matt Cox, it's a pleasure as always, my friend. Thank you for having me on the program. All right. Hot tour.